Hello guys, this is Adib. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. In today's video, we are going to talk about the kinetics of ribcage under which we will be talking about the other two primary muscles that are present that is our intercostal muscles and the scalenes. And in the next video, we will be talking about the secondary muscles that are involved in breathing. If you haven't checked me out on Instagram, please do that. You can find pictures of all my notes over there and also check out my other videos on biomechanics for other references. So without any further ado, let's get started. So today we are going to talk about the kinetics of ribcage and under this we will talk about the internal intercostal, external intercostal, the parasternal fibers, subcostal fibers and also the lateral intercostal which is just a subgroup of the internal and external intercostal muscles. Apart from this in the next slide we will see how parasternal and the scalene muscles work together to prevent paradoxical movement of the chest. So that will be the major part of the video. So please don't miss that. That is the most important part. So starting with our internal intercostal muscles, their origin is at the ridge of the inner surface of your rib. Okay. And it goes down and attaches to the rib below it. And that happens at each level. Whereas your external, it starts more from outside, right on the inferior edge or inferior border of the rib and it goes down. You can see they have a different orientation and because it's there posteriorly, it becomes part of the posterior intercostal membrane, the internal one. And the external intercostal becomes part of the anterior intercostal membrane. Apart from this, under internal intercostal, we have the parasternal fibers, which are present from first to fifth rib and they are present just besides the sternum. That's why they are called as the parasternal fibers. And if you see posteriorly, we have our subcostal muscles, okay, which are found in the lower area of the rib and also posteriorly, as you can see over here. Their orientation is very similar to your internal intercostal. You can notice over here. And they cover more than one intercostal space. So that is their feature. Now that we have understood the intercostal muscles, let's have a look at the function of these. The internal and the external intercostal muscles, they are active during both inspiration as well as expiration. So that is the first point. Apart from this, another feature of them is they activate from cranial to caudal. That means as you start inspiring, the upper chest intercostal muscles will activate and then it will move from cranial to lower chest muscles, the intercostal muscles will start getting activated as the inspiration progresses. So that is the second feature of your intercostal muscles. Next, moving on to the lateral intercostal muscles. These cause axial rotation of the thorax and the direction of the rotation will be based on which side external intercostal muscle activates. Simply put, if you are rotating to your right side, the right external intercostal will work and left internal intercostal will work. And if you are rotating to left, the left external will work and left internal. So this reciprocal contraction of the internal and external intercostal muscles creates rotation of your thorax. So now that we have understood the intercostal muscles, let's move on to the parasternal and the scalene muscle. So if we look at the scalene muscles, its origin is from the transverse process of C3 to C7 vertebras, as you can see over here. And all of them, they go attached down to first and the second rib. Now the scalene muscle can be divided into three parts. There is the anterior, medius and posterior. The anterior and medius, it attaches to the first rib, as I mentioned over here, whereas the posterior attaches to the second rib, which is down below. All of them together, when they contract all these muscles, they create elevation of the first two ribs along with elevation of sternum. Apart from this, the scalene muscle has another specific feature, that is the scalene activity begins at the onset of inspiration. So as you start inspiration, the scalene starts getting active, but at the end of inspiration, the activity increases even more. 
because of the ideal length tension relationship what is length tension relationship when the muscle is at optimal length it is able to generate really good tension so as the inspiration increases at the end of the inspiration the scalene is in such a position where the sternum is really high ribs are high scalene can contract really well and that gives it the edge to activate and contract more and help in inspiration so at the end of inspiration scalene is able to work better because of the ideal length tension relationship apart from these two features it has a very important feature which is in synchrony with the parasternal so we will look at the parasternal and see what both of these muscles do together speaking about the parasternal muscles they are present just besides your sternum right as we saw in the previous slide and these muscles what they do they are primary muscles during your quiet breathing just like your diaphragm now why are these coming under our primary muscles because they play a very important role during the quiet breathing what do they do as you inspire the diaphragm goes down and it creates a negative pressure inside right inside the thorax now this negative pressure what does it cause it causes the air to enter in but that negative pressure will also cause the ribs and the sternum just to go inward right collapse inward and this is prevented by the contraction of your scalenes and the parasternal muscles let me explain this again so if you see this is my sternum right and the ribs are on the side as i'm breathing in the diaphragm is going down and creating that negative pressure correct and that negative pressure pulls all the air from the outside atmosphere into our lungs now that negative pressure will also cause the ribs and the sternum to just go inward during inspiration right but that will not help because that negative pressure won't be created for the air to go in the sternum and the ribs have to be stable and the diaphragm has to go down now they are kept stable the sternum and the ribs are kept stable by these muscles so let's go back to the slides and understand so as i mentioned here the parasternal muscles it causes the rib elevation and anterior movement of sternum so sternum moves anteriorly that is the pump handle movement and the ribs also elevate similarly over here if you look at the scalene it stabilizes the rib cage against the pull of the diaphragm and the negative intrapulmonary pressure over here it stabilizes the rib cage at the sternum and prevents the inward movement of upper chest right so basically the inward movement of upper chest is prevented by the activity of all these muscles and this is called as prevention of paradoxical movement of upper chest what is paradoxical exactly opposite right so when we are breathing our chest should not go inside it has to stay stable the diaphragm has to pull so that the air goes in not the chest going in right so this paradoxical movement of chest going in is prevented by the other two muscles that's why together three of them form the primary muscles right the diaphragm which will pull and the other two muscles which will stabilize your rib cage so that breathing can happen so that's how these muscles together work and prevent the paradoxical movement of the upper chest so i hope i made this concept clear enough now let's quickly summarize the topic first we saw the intercostal muscles under which we saw internal and external which are present or active during inspiration as well as expiration we saw lateral intercostal which help in rotation of the thorax right then we moved on to the parasternal muscles under this we saw how scalenes and parasternal muscles together contribute in preventing the paradoxical movement of the chest they stabilize our rib cage and the sternum so that inspiration happens efficiently so with that we finish off this topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching